Hey, it's William Molini from Flowers and Scents with your floral industry buzz. Okay, today we're going to interview Romero Pina Herrera. And Romero, also known as Robin, uh, was the sort of uh, brains behind Flowers for Kids and now more recently Memorial Day Flowers. And Memorial Day Flowers is uh, quite an event. I attended this year at Arlington National Cemetery, and I have to tell you, it's um, something important for the flower business. So I'm going to let Romero tell you about how this all came about. So without further ado, Romero Pina Herrera. Well, Romero Pina Herrera, welcome to Flowers and Scents. Um, it's been a while since uh, I've been able to put sit you down long enough to have this interview. So. Uh, uh, welcome to Flowers and Scents, and, and we can talk about some things because Romero, who uh, is an old friend of mine, uh, is sort of an odd guy that does things a little differently than other people, um, and he finds uh, little niches that uh, needed to be found. So, um, obviously, uh, this is all about the, more, the Memorial Day Flower Foundation that you started somehow, and perhaps tell us what it is. What an odd opening, Willie. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate your openness to for a different type of format for this interview. Uh, I think Flowers and Scents has become the de facto uh, floral media platform of record. I hope so. It's sort of paraphrase in New York Times. Uh, and congratulations on it. You've worked very, very hard over these years to make it work. And uh, everyone, everyone listens. Good. I'm happy. So tell us about the foundation. Well, Memorial Day Flowers started uh, after Osama bin Laden was killed on May 2nd, 2011. Uh, three of us uh, from the American Ecuadorian Chamber of Commerce here in Quito, I'm talking to you from Quito. Uh, we got together and said, what can we do to show appreciation for our country? And I mentioned that I have five members of my family at Arlington National Cemetery and said, well, let's call them up and see if they'll accept 10,000 Ecuadorian roses. So with some help from, um, uh, from, the, from the flower growers, um, and even from Mexico, Florida's at the time. Uh, that's how we started the program. And we handed them out, took about two hours to do it. Um, you know, three weeks after, um, after Osama Laden was killed. And from there it grew. And uh, thanks to people like Renato Segueco, who was with SAF, uh, Abe and Mina Bacara, uh, their scout troops that, who stayed with us for 12, 13 years to help out. Uh, that's how the whole thing started. We invited, second year, we invited California and Columbia to join, and Delaware Valley has uh, continually been a great sponsor of the program, and Johan Sun uh, with Soli Farms and the whole Queens group, they made it click at first. It was fantastic. Uh, we had, at first, we had some wonderful support from Rafael Correa's uh, Ecuadorian government, uh, and since 2016, our main benefactor, and who keeps the lights on uh, and has been wonderful on our partners, Cal Flowers. So thank you, uh, Frank, oh, great, Frank, Steve, uh, Michael, Ben, Jeannie, Ivor, uh, everyone, and Pat, Pat Dawson has been a tremendous support as well. So, so that's how it started and it, and it grew it and grew. Uh, and we do it not just, we, I, I organize it with, with your brother and other people at Arlington and across the country. We do another dozen cemeteries in a sort of a big way and another couple of cemeteries by sending tribute boxes. So there's different parts of it. Yeah, and, and let's let's dissect them a little bit. Okay, so you have the, the, the foundation, which primary goal is to put a, a, a rose or a flower on every grave at Arlington. That's sort or a bouquet. Of, or a bouquet. Or a bouquet. Or a bouquet. <laughs> okay, and that's sort of the ultimate goal. And to do that, you have volunteers. You have volunteers, first of all, that uh, send flowers or donations, I guess. Um, mostly, they, you know, California and Colombia and Ecuador and all those people uh, in Miami send, sent lots of flowers. And, and then we, as I know, because I was there this year, we process them and then use Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and other volunteers to help put them on the graves. Is that correct? Well, if we go back to well, this year when you were there, I mean, how did you feel when you were there? I, it's your... awesome. It's a wonderful experience. And that's why I'm happy to, uh, to have this opportunity to talk about it again. Well, uh, it's, it has grown. During COVID, it was, it was a little bit tough, but uh, we, have, we, have, we have grown. Uh, 
in this last year, we had about 80,000 flowers sponsored by people outside the flower industry. Uh, this is a week before more Memorial Day. And what happened is that your brother, who um, can, you know, he can herd cats, and Michael Black from uh, Jet Fresh made some telephone calls. And all of a sudden, we got another 220,000 donated flowers from different floral importers, most patriotic Americans in the world. And not just Colombian and, and, Cal uh, Colombian and Cuban Americans, but also some offshore growers. I mean, I can't say enough things about, uh, about passion growers who've been tremendous supporters, uh, Marcos Good, uh, Cheryl and, and, and Jaime. Uh, they, they donate between 30 and 50,000 flowers every year. Wow. Uh, so uh, that's how we made it. And so this year at Arlington, we had over 300,000 flowers. So then you have Arlington, which is sort of the main event, if you will. Uh, and then since there are, you know, military cemeteries all over the country, you also have flowers, you collect them for, to donate to those particular ones as well, yes? Well, the flowers outside of Arlington, they're all paid for. Okay. And we help, we help groups like Victory for Veterans uh, fundraise. So they're being charged a dollar, dollar per flower, about approximately or less. And then they they charge a dollar fifty, and the, the difference uh, they use for their suicide prevention. So there are groups like that all over, and we do that with uh, not just with with roses or flowers, but also with bouquets. So there are groups are doing are helping veterans and using uh, this as a fundraiser. But okay. let's if, if you don't mind, well, let's go through and so people have an idea of what Arlington. Let's put some is. buttons there. Let's see some pictures there. This is how it all starts. It all starts. It's, it's really it's a four day event: Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So the first thing you can see the two Armelini um, the trucks. I think you're familiar with these trucks. I, the I recognize the name anyway. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Um, and, and the gentleman there is a master sergeant who's talking to me. And apparently, there's two words in uh, uh, in the military. If you want to get to get things done, it's master sergeant. So that's 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 one of room. And let's see if I can keep them going here. And okay, down. On Saturday morning, Delaware Valley delivers flowers. This year, they delivered 55,000 flowers to us. They donated. Yeah, they kept coming. <laughs> they, they kept coming. Dry pack. So that's and that kept, kept you working. Uh, Tim, Tim Dewey is a fantastic supporter of the program. Um, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of his football club in, in London, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I'll leave that out. Okay. Ah, okay. And then, uh, and what we have here is the crew because uh, my brother brings his whole family and we have people from uh, Fresca, I see, and uh, various other places. Uh, well, if you see there on the, on the far right, Gabriel Vicente, he came up yeah. this year. That's yeah. part of the group. We have a thir we had 30 people who were core volunteers. This is before they got put on their Panama hats and their, uh, and their official, official Morley flower uh, t-shirts and all that. But uh, that that starts the whole thing. You can see some you know, someone from Jet Fresh, you know, uh, board members. Uh, they, they come from every work, the drivers and all that. Moving along, so you the flowers. As I said, two hundred twenty thousand flowers came from floral importers, from everyone. I mean, it was uh, my, your brother and Michael Black. As I said they made the calls. We got flowers from uh, from obviously from the Queens Group, the Elite Flower, uh, Passion. Uh, Galleria, uh, USA Bouquet, EQR, Roger Wright, I've known for years as well. Uh, yeah, Floral Scents, uh, Choice. We'll put. I'll send you the list. You can put it underneath. Uh, underneath yeah, the it's video. quite a list. I, I would almost say it's you know it was it's the who's who in Miami that donated flowers. It's the wonderful thing about this program. Uh, it brings out the best in people, and we're dealing with good people. And it, and that's and that's I, that's what I love about the program. And there, I counted up Bernardo and I, who, are, who works with me, we counted up just to make this happen in the floor industry. Yeah, there are about 150 people. And this and 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 then you have and you have to include those from Bayish who help out in the wholesale houses or Amados um, or uh, Bill Doran, Roque Floral. It's you know, all over the country. It's uh, and obviously and obviously DV. So the flowers arrive like like this uh, in. In many cases, in dry packs, we had a, a full trailer of wet pack, which is about 100,000 100, flowers, then dry pack another 110, 100, 120, 130 dry pack. Uh, and 
you can you see it. You had to, you were there. You had to process it. We had about 150, 200 people processing the flowers on Saturday. Yeah, it was quite an event, and and somehow we pulled it off. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of flowers, and therefore a lot of waste too. Uh, we had uh, I think two truckloads of trash when it was all sent done. Uh, the flower business, unfortunately, still pr produces a lot of trash, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, it's a wonderful event and, and people showed up and again, we have the, the volunteers that you've sort of organized. Uh, I, it's wonderful that the Boy Scouts and I guess Girl Scouts even uh, have helped out huh? every year. Well, it was mostly Boy Scouts, there's also from the DC um, International School. They, they brought in 17 people and mm -hmm. you have people just showing up. I have, I have friends from Washington who show up on Saturday to help processing. Processing. I can, a friend who's a lawyer, 75 year old lawyer. He and his wife show up every year to help out. Yeah. And Dennis Paul and his wife and everybody else. I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's quite an event that the people show up for. Dennis and Paul and never with that in mind, Mr. Romero, um, what, okay, we do, well, we, I say, uh, I'm including myself now, but you've done this now for many years. Uh, it continues to grow. Um, and, and what do we see in the future? I mean, what, what would you like to see uh, going forward here? Let's say next year already. Uh, do we need more volunteers? Do you need more flowers? What do you need? Well, we need more flowers. I mean, if um, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. But I think the goal for Arlington is to place a bouquet at every every uh, grave, uh, and that way it can be a fundraiser for the Boy Scouts or for the for other other organizations that that could use it, and also. It, remember, this is really truly about honoring those who have served our country, and 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 we'll we'll, we'll get to that. But this, uh, I continue about the flowers. I mean, the quality of flowers that came. Oh, it was from, awesome. There was there was a lot of great flowers there. <laughs> it was amazing, and and people are happy. Are just they're they're happy to do it. Um, that's you know some you know you would think you get bad flowers, but no, people really really want to help. Uh, this is one of my favorite people here, uh, Super Sue. Scutelli and yeah. Sue, who come from younger and son. She and her husband come down every year to um, to to help out. They bring flowers. They bring a uh, truck. They bring a trailer. They bring supplies. They bring food. Uh, they do, well, yeah, we, they, they do that, but they also bring flowers from Ben Dobie from Holland America uh, in California, who donates between 350 and 700 bouquets for the TAPS children. TAPS children, the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. These are kids who've lost one and perhaps even two of their parents in the recent conflict. Okay, that's or the third leg of your trip there. Yeah, yeah. That's well, or, 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 to, or to suicide. I mean, it's it gets, um, it, it gets, it's very emotional. And those flowers go, they're, they're dropped off the Marriott Hotel where there's a big convention for these children. And they have, um, they have a chance to place a place a bouquet from Holland America at the graves and in okay. section 60. And we don't take many pictures of section 60 because it's very, very personal. Uh, so I, I, you know, so you won't see much of that. So these, the, these are the flowers, uh, the flowers get put in tote bags, 25 flowers uh, right. per tote bag. And I want to read some this. So you can see from Fresca here, and I will read to you what, what Fresca has, um, what Monte Vicente, wrote and it's, it's it's really quite nice and he said why i personally have been supporting memorial day flowers as an immigrant at a young age from a country that was overtaken by communist and bloody dictators i have an appreciation for the freedom and the democracy that we enjoy in the united states that is very different and much appreciated we owe this freedom to the brave women and men who gave the ultimate sacrifice or willing to give the ultimate sacrifice to defend our country with all its imperfections the United States is clearly the greatest and most openly developed country in the world. I feel that we as Americans most must do more to honor and pay our respect to our brave soldiers. This is a small way in which I can give back by sending my flowers to Arlington every year. May God always protect our soldiers. Sweet. Yeah, uh, that was quite a uh, an article or, or comment he wrote. I liked it a lot. So, and so the flowers, the flowers go go in these bags as you see, and you can see it. Oh, there's an Armelini bag in the front there as well with, with chips of Fila. Yeah. Uh, and these, these are the scouts. Some of the scouts, we uh, I've already talked to the scouts. They plan to bring in 200 scouts for next year. Wow. Help us out on Saturday, Sunday, and perhaps even Monday. They'll be given, I'll be given flowers. 
and they, they generally get about 100 to 200 flowers to place in the far flung sections of Arlington. The ones that don't get covered because it's so far away from the, from the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. They also bring these flowers up. You can see from here, these are the wet pack flowers. That's the uh, Memorial Amphitheater. Uh, you can see the passion growers and the elite flowers. Those are all wet packed. Uh, they go. They spend the night on Saturday night in the catacombs underneath the um, amphitheater, and that's the catacombs. You can see uh, all wet packed. And those flowers are for handing out at the tomb of the unknown soldier. We had nine thousand six hundred people were given a flower to place at the tomb, and this is only the fourth time in history that has ever happened. And all the other three times have been done with the Memorial Day Flower Foundation. You know, we that's, did it for um, that's a special honor that we've. You've right. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is the third time. Right. Yeah. Um, so there's the, the, the it gave us a, the canopy here uh, for the flowers. And just so people understand, so these we set these up in certain places in the in in, in the cemetery, and then uh, people walk in, either volunteers that have volunteered, and or people that are coming there to pay their respects to their own lost ones. Uh, they come there, grab a, a bag or a bunch, and go off to the grave sites. Well, actually, in, th in this case, Willie, this is right before the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Oh, okay. Everyone here gets one flower, not one, not two or three. They get one flower to place at the, to lay at the tomb. Um, you can see this the queue, the queue here. Um, there were 9,600 people who had this opportunity to do this. And well, you're so some... busy working. I didn't get a chance to see that part. But anyway, right. this, is, this is Celine Bray from Jet Celine Fresh. And Jet I'm... Fresh, yeah. I, I can't say enough thing, nice things about the whole Jet Fresh group. Mike Black and Ryan, uh, Mimi, Ashley, uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy the, the Tulip, Pinky, and, and Celine came up and she was a great help. She was just wonderful. Yeah, and she knows got, her flowers. She she just works. <laughs> I like it. And smiles. Um, and this is the this is uh, First Lieutenant General Tom Miller, who's the Chief of Staff of the Air Force Logistics General. He was the first person to place a flower at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So that was eight o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Mm. He placed the first flower. Um, and then from then on, people had a chance to place flowers and lay the flowers. You can see them. Sweet. And the step on the plaza and place a flower is a unique experience. I mean, they don't let you step on the plaza. Yeah. See and here rests the honored glory um, in honor glory American soldier known only to God. Hmm. And, and basically, these are soldiers that didn't come back. Is that what it is? No, this is the soldiers that were unknown. Um, unknown. They they couldn't um, they couldn't recognize it was in World War One, World War World War Two. There's actually a tomb of the unknown soldier in Alexandria of the Revolutionary War. Oh. And we also give flowers for that too, generally. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's, an old, that's an old church, a churchyard, church graveyard. Hmm. And this is a lovely picture. This was taken last year uh, for Memorial Day of, the, of our flowers, of the flowers that came from, from California and from the Miami Floral Importers. Hmm. That was taken at, at dawn on Memorial Day. Uh, also on that Sunday is, as you mentioned, people get a chance to have flowers to place as at, at grave size in different sections. And mm -hmm. I think you know those two people, uh, <laughs> your, your, your little brother and your, and, and your niece, Dana. Yeah. Um, and so all the flowers come out there. That's at McClellan Gate. That's uh, down, below, down, down below. So people have a chance to pick up flowers. This is a picture from 2019. Just to give you an idea of where the, what the truck was, that's uh, right there. There's 240,000 flowers. Mm. There, and there's 280,000 headstones at Arlington with another 70,000 in the columbarium. And this is what people do. They get, they have the bag of flowers, 25 flowers, and they place the flower before the grave and they quietly re read the inscription and thank the person for service. And this is what it's all about. It's about honoring those who have served our country um, and to have, who have just, you know, were, were with the expression, um, all gave some, some gave all. Some gave, say, some gave all. Yeah, it's, uh, look, it's a, quite an emotional time. You can't, even with these pictures, you sort of can't really appreciate the breadth of all those headstones, uh, as far as you can see in every direction almost. So it's pretty powerful. Uh, 
this is, I, I, this we're is running out of time now, so uh, we're about. I'll to make this quick. We'll make this quick. This is interesting. This is Section 18, which is, has a lot of World War One soldiers. And this is a friend of Frank Biddle's. Um, he and I go to Section 18. It's sponsored by a, um, a colonel, uh, Danielle Miller, and her husband, um, as as shop, shop, and they sponsor the section. Uh, you'll see this grave here, Hugo Floro. He died on November 10th, 1918. He died one day before the armistice went into effect in World War I. It's, it's poignant to me. Um, this is a grave of a, of, a, of a soldier, Private Baldwin, who I place a flower every year, uh, who was wounded in the first battle of the Civil War in Bull Run, and he died from wounds from that battle after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, after, the, after it ended. Hmm. Uh, this is from the Columbia space, uh, Columbia space, uh, another uh, one of the volunteers placing the flowers. You can see the flowers. This is your uh, your niece giving out flowers on Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and this is a, a photograph of uh, Fort Logan National Cemetery. Twelve thousand flowers, and this is done. This is helped by through Bill Doran in, um, in Denver. They play that's a picture for veterans. A very cute picture of one of one of our volunteers. Yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> my, my grandfather's grave, and this I love this photograph. This is your brother placing a flower at section 60, placing a bouquet of flowers at section 60 for someone, from for the, the brother of someone your, your brother knows very well. Well, and my brother that, uh, is a patriotic fellow and we didn't, fortunately, we didn't get drafted. So we uh, this is his way of giving back and, uh, and perhaps mine as well. So, hey, remember, we're gonna have to wrap this up because we're gonna run out of time. The Zoom is gonna cut us off, so. Uh, going forward, again, the future, next year, what do you want to see happen? Uh, well, I'd like to see this around the country, that people do this. They, they, they get flowers somehow and, and do this. They don't have to get flowers to the foundation. They can go to a local flower shop, wholesale. I mean, everyone's willing to help. This, is, this brings out the best in people. Uh, we will continue concentrating on Arlington National Cemetery and supplying flowers for those groups who'd like to do it around the country, um, especially for fundraising. Uh, we'd like to see people put bouquets at Arlington National Cemetery and use that and, and use that to help their help their groups. And more importantly, we want people to learn about our history mm -hmm. and show appreciation for those who served. Uh, I've learned something every Memorial Day, I learned about history. And there's a wonderful woman uh, who is sort of like the unofficial historian. She's a florist and she knows the stories of everyone. And, mm -hmm. and she and I talk a week, an hour every week just about uh, different sections and what what's what's going on and and there's there's three brothers who were killed in the last three months of World War One, and interred in France and two of them are buried in Section 18. One was still in France. Wow. Hey, well, it's a powerful program. Um, I'm glad you put it together. Um, I think then maybe the importers and the people with flowers will be uh, listening and waiting for our call for donations for next year and uh, and. I hope they do, and, and and maybe they'll show up too. We we can always handle more volunteers in, in Arlington. I think, I think they will. I mean, if it weren't for the floral industry, and there's some wonderful people in it. I mean, a Soco Flor. I'm very grateful to Soco Flores. Uh, you know, Wolfsa SAF has helped. Uh, I mean, if it weren't for the floral importers, though, this would not exist. And, and the floral, yeah, the floral. industry supports it. Right, Cal Flowers has been, it really has been our lifeline. Um, so thank you to them tremendously. All right, my friend, thank you for your time and you have a great day, sir. Thank you, Willie, keep, play keep playing. Here we go.